Hello and welcome to Roundtable. Italy could be on course to vote in its first female Prime Minister following the resignation of Mario Draghi. It would be a significant achievement for Georgia Maloney. But many remain wary because her party traces its roots back to Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator who came to power almost a century ago. Just five years ago, Maloney's Brothers of Italy movement could barely scrape together 4% of the vote. Now it's topping the polls, raising the prospect that the 45-year-old former journalist could be the head of a new right-wing coalition. Very good to have your company. I'm David Foster. Georgia Maloney says her party doesn't pose a threat to Italy or its allies, despite her possible coalition partners having, among other things, traditionally strong ties to Moscow. The concern comes because both Matteo Salvini's League Party and Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia have criticised weapons deliveries to help Kiev fight Russia. But in an interview with the Italian newspaper La Stampa, Maloney was at pains to insist she is both pro-NATO and Ukraine. And she called warnings in the international media about the dangers of the right taking over, scaremongering by leftist think tanks intent on terrorizing the markets. So what can Europe and its partners expect from this untested right-wing populist leader? And more importantly, what will happen to the essential economic reforms that Mario Draghi failed to push through? Time to get talking. We travel first to Viareggio in Italy, and there we see Alan Friedman, author and journalist, to Rome, and Elenia Lucaselli is there, member of the Italian Chamber of Deputies for Fratelli d'Italia, and Roberto Dalimonte, professor of political science at Luis Guido Carli University of Rome. Um, it is this Brothers of Italy party, Elenia, that we're talking about, Fratelli d'Italia, that has gone from, I think it's about 4% up to 24%. What is the appeal? Well, first of all, I don't think we are uh, far right. Uh, that's uh, not the right definition of uh, my party. We are um, a party that represents some values, uh, that want to return back to some values. And I think this is what Italians want right now. Uh, we had few years, actually more than few years, uh, in which uh, there was, uh, you know, everything and the opposite of everything. And people are tired of this. People just want to be clear about family, about uh, not just the immigration, but our uh, position in Europe, like the Italian position in Europe. They want to be clear about uh, our economy and where we want to bring our country. I think this is the appeal of my party. OK, Elena, thanks for the moment. Alan, same question to you. What is their appeal? Well, the appeal of the far-right uh, Brothers of Italy uh, is the same appeal that Donald Trump has to his far-right supporters in America, the same appeal that Marine Le Pen has to her neo-Nazi supporters in France, the same appeal that Orban and his right-wing authoritarian appeal. It's a, an appeal of a strong person who seems to offer simple solutions to very complicated problems, but it's actually just demagogic populism. It's, there's no substance. And Maloney doesn't have a qualified staff of advisors or economic people around her. And she basically has a party that still contains many admirers of Benito Mussolini, the dictator. So no, she's on. denied no, this and on. says she's a post-fascist party. But there are many nostalgic members of her party who still like to give the Roman salute like Mussolini did. So people are afraid on the moderate. You know, she makes up 25 percent of the current polling. So she's the biggest party right now. That's mainly because she's been the party of protest and the only party in opposition for the last few years. So naturally, whenever people are unhappy, they go to the opposition party. Yeah, I, I get I it. I'm going to say to you, Elena, you, you will get a chance to come back on that, but I want to make sure that we bring all of our guests in at the very top of the programme. Roberto, um, Professor, suggestion there uh, by Alan Friedman that they don't have experience really to run a government, and there's an article I picked up on here that says 
Italy's far right struggling to find available candidates, um, has little experience of national government, has been calling existing ministers to try to recruit them. Um, are they capable of running the country in any kind of coalition? Well, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, many Italians are ready to give them a chance. And I think what I heard uh, from uh, Friedman is, uh, is understandable, is, uh, is we, we are really don't know what is the expert, expert network that the Five Star has. Um, but the point really is that this is their turn. We have seen the Italians voting for Berlusconi. We have seen Italians voted for Prodi, voted for Grillo, voted for Silvini. Today, they want to try something else, something different, and they want to try Meloni. Whatever the drawbacks, this is the appeal that Meloni has, that she has never been tested before, except for a brief interlude in a Berlusconi government. And today, this is the party that one Italians out of four would like to see... I, I, I get that, but are, are you fight? suggesting, Professor, that the Italian public like them simply because they're a novelty? They like them because they have not been tried before. They appear, you know, as a new thing, and uh, to be new today, to be different, is an asset. And, uh, and, and I think... And the other asset is the fact that, uh, as Friedman said, they are the opposition party, the only opposition party. They, they are collecting all the discontent created by the pandemics, by the decision of the government on the pandemics, by, by the economic crisis. So they are a collector of discontent. OK, I'm, I'm going to go to you, Elenia, now and ask you about the, the reforms and the money that might come from the European Union or not. Italy's got 46 billion so far. It's been allocated 200 billion. Um, there are suggestions, and this is an article I read in Time magazine, um, the need to secure relief funds from Brussels has made life more difficult and the fear that new elections would unleash chaos. That was the only thing that held things together. So the suggestion from Time is that if there are new elections, which may well come in September, this money may not arrive. Well, first of all, let me just uh, say one thing about, uh, you know, the relationship with uh, Mussolini that uh, uh, you were talking uh, before. I want to just say one thing. I'm, uh, my husband is Jewish and my sons are Jewish. So I think that this uh, idea of a far right is something that uh, some people want to put on us, but we are really far from there. And um, you cannot uh, put our party or Giorgia Meloni in the same asset as uh, La Le Pen in, uh, in France because uh, we are not even in the same uh, European group. So it's very different and our story is very different. OK, so I'll, I tell you what, I'll tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to play in a clip from Giorgia Meloni. We are not going to care about the labels they stick upon us. We are fed up of a left that presumes to lecture us even on what the right should be, what it should do, how it should behave, and even how it should define itself. The left would do better to try recovering, recovering its own identity. We on the right know exactly who we are and what we stand for. But the point's been made, Elenia, that um the party perhaps doesn't quite know what it stands for because it wouldn't know how to run a government. Well, I mean, uh, first of all, you know, we you, you need to try someone at the government to say if he's capable or not to uh, go on. Uh, Italy did that with the uh, uh, Democratic Party and uh, for 10 years, and that was a pretty bad experience because uh, we are where we are right now. So if we have issues with the money in Europe and we, if we have issues with the work and labor and uh, immigration right now in Italy, and even in our economy, we have a lot of holes, 
this is the result of more than 10 years of uh, left uh, government. OK, and so Alan, we, Alan Freeman we... is, is asking very nicely if he can come in in proper schoolboy fashion. He's put his hand up. Um, Alan, what very do you want to say? i to hear him. I want to just do a very quick fact check on two points. Point one, um, Georgia Maloney voted against the European Parliament and has been an opponent, an anti-Euro person all her career. Now she says she's not. Georgia Maloney, in her autobiography, wrote that Vladimir Putin was the model and the quintessence of Christian identity. I mean, Georgia Maloney is in bed with the most racist QAnon conspiracy theorists from Steve Bannon right through to Moscow. And Giorgio Maloney, as prime minister, would put Italy in danger of no longer being part of the front that supports Ukraine against Russia. So there are big geopolitical implications. I'll tell you what, Maloney. Alan, I'm going to play in a clip, not right now, because we've just had one from Georgia Maloney, in which she says the exact opposite. That'll come later in the programme. So can we leave Ukraine for, for just a moment? Um, Roberta, let me ask you, in, in terms of the money that's needed, 46 billion paid out so far, that was a $25 billion advance. $200 billion needs to come to Italy, and it has to make reforms. What reforms do you see, any kind of coalition with uh, Fratelli d'Italia, Forza Italia, uh, and any of the other parties doing that is um, good enough to please the European Union so that it releases the money? Well, they have to do the reforms that Draghi has not been able to do. And uh, that this will be the big test, and we'll see if they, if they can do it. Well, what, what are because those reforms? Please help, help our audience. The first one is uh, the judiciary, which the Draghi government has been working on. It was very close to completion, but I don't think it will be completed. Uh, the reform of uh, the tax, tax code, that was also started by the Draghi government, it has to be done. The reforms of uh, uh, competitive... Uh, antitrust competitive legislation uh, to promote competition, uh, the reform of public administration. These are the major structural reforms that the next government will have to tackle. OK, so, so without those reforms, I'm sorry to interrupt, without those reforms, they won't necessarily get the money. Um, what makes it likely that any kind of new coalition from the right will be able to get those reforms through in a way that Draghi has not? Well, that's, that's the challenge that they, they face and the, the challenge that the country faces. I cannot tell you whether this is going to happen or not. We have to test them. So it's, it's, wor it's fail, worth taking a chance, is it, on, on, on the fact that these people are untested so far, just to see whether they can possibly do it? It's not the question of taking a chance, because we have no choice. You know, let's look at the reality. This is a coalition that most likely is going to win the next election. This is what the Italians want. We have no choice. And we have, you know, Friedman doesn't like that, but it's a fact. All the data... Necessarily, I don't think a majority of Italians... I think Berlusconi's party is splitting in two. And so I think the, the right wing oh, will only get 45 or 47 percent, less than a majority. Eleni, I'm going to come to you in just a moment and ask you about Silvio Berlusconi, but uh, Roberto, you had a point you hadn't quite finished. Well, I'd like to remind uh, Alan that uh, with the present electoral system, you don't need 50% of the votes to win. With 45% of the votes, uh, most likely the centre-right will get almost 60% uh, of the seats. And, and that's a fact. I'm not saying, I'm not promoting that. I'm a political scientist. I look at the reality. And this sure. most likely will be the government they will have to comply with a request from the European Union on the EU funds. OK. Elenia, let me put this to you. We're going to put up on the screen the results of the 2018 election, where, as we've mentioned, um, your party got just over 4% of the vote, now standing at 24%, and polls from today. So 24% today. La Liga, right wing, down just a fraction from 17 and a half. Uh, Forza Italia, Berlusconi's party, as we've mentioned, down from 14 to 18. But those are your most likely partners in government. La Liga, Forza Italia and Fratelli d'Italia. I want to ask you about going into partnership 
with the man we see behind me, Silvio Berlusconi, a man that Alan Friedman's written books about, made a film about. Um, he was convicted at one point of having underage sex with a young woman. He was cleared on appeal on that one. Tax fraud was another conviction. He has said it is natural that women are happy if a man tries to seduce them. It's better to like beautiful girls than to be gay. What do you make about <laughs> chances of this man returning in some way to have influence over the government? Well, first of all, he went through a very long uh, uh, procedure in front of the court and uh, everything uh, was uh, finally closed. So I think uh, sometimes some things need to remain uh, just uh, on that level. Well, and would you be comfortable I... with spending time with this man in government? Well, I... I mean, I, I don't think I will be in the government. I will still okay. be in parliament. So would I you don't be have happy that the people you are aligned to, your party leaders, would be happy to, to get into bed with in, in the political sense with this man? Well, I really think, uh, you know, that part is close and it was close uh, uh, in, in a good way for Berlusconi. So I think the judge made their decision uh, having everything in front of them. So... If a judge say that uh, there was no uh, a really bad things done... Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking story. also about, about I, the, things, the things he's said. The things he's said, as I mentioned just there. It's better to like well, beautiful you know, girls than to be gay. Uh, it's not... I, mean, I can go through a lot of bad things said, uh, even from a very important representative from the left side. So I don't think that uh, is really okay. what uh, we, we need... Uh, right now, right you, now we you have made you've made your point. I understand that. I understand that. Italy. But I want to ask you about um, what you think La Liga and Forza Italia would bring that you don't, as the Fratelli d'Italia, that you wouldn't bring to the government. What would they add? Uh, well, I mean, uh, Forza Italia is from uh, uh, the economy side, a very uh, liberal party. Uh, and uh, I think we can take from them their suggestion about how uh, to bring back uh, our economy to make works. Uh, and from Lega, I think, uh, uh, you know, Lega is one of the most old uh, political parties in our country right now. We are very young and Lega is a very, uh, very old party in Italy. Uh, I think these two things can be balanced between, uh, you know, experience and new ideas to bring uh, in the government to go forward with Italy needs. And I agree that we need very strategic things uh, starting from our uh, work system and uh, our um, all our public system, which is very old, and if we don't change right now, and we don't take this opportunity to change with this election, maybe we will not change in the future. And uh, just to answer the question that uh, you asked me before about the money and Europe, yes. I think that it's, it's not really an issue right now. Europe uh, will uh, never stop to help Italy if Italy uh, is still able to be uh, a strategic uh, partner partner in, inside Europe. Okay, but which... isn't that isn't that in a sense, Alan Freeman, what happened with Greece? Greece didn't meet any of the financial um, criteria necessary um, to be helped by the European yeah. Union, but the European Union helped it anyway. So Elenia there is suggesting that um, even if the reforms aren't put into place, Italy is too big to allow to fail. It will get the help come what may. No, I, I don't think that's the subject. Um, I, I think if, the, if uh, TRT World wants to understand how uh, Georgia Maloney relates to Greece, she's like Golden Dawn, like the neo-fascists in Greece. Um, but I think that there were some fake news delivered a little while ago. Uh, my, my colleague from uh, the, the right-wing party said that Berlusconi, everything finished well for him and is closed. Not true. He's still under trial for bribery and other charges. He was convicted by the Supreme Court of tax fraud and sentenced to community service. I interviewed him for my movie while he was serving a criminal sentence for criminal tax fraud. I don't think he finished well. The point about Berlusconi, he wants a comeback. He wants revenge. He wants to get there. So 
what's happened is he's supporting the neo-fascist or post-fascist party, Fratelli d'Italia. La Lega is joining because he's afraid of losing out to Bologna, Salvini. It's a competition to go right. And they're all getting together to see if they can beat the rest of Italy. But Berlusconi's party is breaking in two, and the moderates are leaving him. That's why I say it could be very close, this election, because you'll have the extreme right with a bit of Berlusconi, and then most of Berlusconi's party leaving him and going to the more moderate side. We had a perfectly good prime minister with Mario Draghi, one of the world's most respected statesmen. He was managing the economic crisis, the war in Ukraine and everything very well. But because of their ambition and opportunism, Berlusconi, Salvini, and former Prime Minister Conte all helped to kill the Draghi government. And that's a tragedy for Italy, which will uh, soon This be is something we have covered in a, a previous... It's something we've covered in a previous programme. I, I understand what you're saying, but Ukraine was mentioned. And, Elenia, I would like you to listen to what Georgia Maloney has to say here. In the end, I decided to be here because faced with this uh, unacceptable attack, being here is the best way to clarify where we stand on this conflict. We are on the side of international law. We are on the side of freedom. And indeed, we are on the side of a proud nation that is teaching the world what it means to fight for freedom. And yet, despite what you heard there from Giorgio Meloni, the story has been circulating that the far right in Italy wants to stay more aligned with Russia and does not actually want to supply weapons to Ukraine. Where do those two views stand side by side? Well, uh, first of all, I talk for uh, Brothers of Italy, uh, and uh, we were very clear from the beginning uh, on which was uh, our side. And I think uh, we were more um, strong on our position than all the other uh, parties near uh, Draghi and uh, that, that helped Draghi in uh, uh, in the government. So, our so you're saying that strong. your party would be quite happy to continue supplying weapons to Ukraine? Well, it's not just about weapons. It's about uh, freedom. Well, let's you talk about weapons. From, uh... Let's talk about weapons. Would you be happy to see weapons still going? Well, that's, that, that is just a part. That is just a part. We need to Well, can you answer the question? Understand... Would you be happy to see weapons still going yeah. to Ukraine with your support as an Italian I never, political... I, I'm never happy uh, when I see weapons. But the point is that if we don't defend ourselves, at, which means defend Ukraine, we will, uh, we will not be able to defend our culture and our story and our history from an attack. We were not the first one to attack. We just uh, try to help Ukraine. And uh, I think that's the right position. So it's not okay. uh, the, the point is not that we want to we want a war. We didn't ask for a war. No, 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 I, I, I do get that, Roberto. But when there is a war, you need to defend yourself. Roberto, we lost you for a little while. Glad you're back, but we're coming towards the end no, of the program. I want to ask you about project. Ukraine and weaponry. Um, would a right-leaning party, if you want to put it that way, be happy to continue supporting Ukraine in the way that the Italian government has up till now? I just say no. I think uh, they have hard time to continue along the Draghi position, as, as we heard also from uh, uh, Elenia. Uh, they'll, I don't see them uh, steadfastly um, supporting a policy of sending weapons. And, and where would that leave them in the European club that seems to be giving support uh, to Ukraine? Okay. Yeah, they would be in a, a critical position. And this will be... In a, this will not be just the only issue. But, you know, I, I'm afraid that uh, we're going to see other countries wavering in their support to send the uh, weapons. So they might, they might be in uh, good company. Alan, your thoughts, finally. Sorry, mm -hmm. we're coming towards the end. Eleni, I won't have another chance to come back to you. Thanks for your participation. Alan Friedman, your, your thoughts on where this would leave Ukraine and, and, and the European... Um, joint effort, if you like, to support that country? 
Well, as I've written in the uh, Italian newspaper La Stampa, uh, a Maloney Salvini government could risk an economic and financial crisis for Italy, recession, and broader implications of the lack of solidarity among European members. The European Union raised all this next generation money that Italy is taking, 200 billion of this. And if Italy is not able to follow through or doesn't want to, and if it adapts an anti-European uh, line like Salvini has always had, and Meloni has always had, Italy could be headed for trouble, financial markets in trouble, and the European Central Bank called to action. That's the grim scenario we may be facing. Okay, and we may see come September. Listen, thank you very much indeed. Very good to have you on the programme. Alan Friedman, your movie about Berlusconi called My Way. You've written the, I think, authorised biography of the man. Elena, thank you very much indeed. And Professor uh, Roberto, thank you very much indeed for coming on this edition of Roundtable. Thank you, wherever you're watching. Uh, from me, David Foster, and the Roundtable team. Until next time, I hope you'll be with us next time. Goodbye.